I do want to move on to the primary and as you've probably seen polls after the debate didn't show anyone moving out of that pack breaking free catching up to front runner Donald Trump so how realistically do you gain that ground well I think for us it's very different uh, we're the least uh, you asked this back uh, when we met in June and still the case today, even though we've made great progress, particularly in Iowa, New Hampshire, we're still the least known person on the stage uh, and, and in the and in those early markets. But we're ahead in Iowa, New Hampshire of other candidates that were on the stage with us on Wednesday night. And yet only 50 percent of the people in Iowa, New Hampshire knows if we could you know, double our name recognition to get it as high and close to 100 percent like some of the other candidates, we'd be uh, likely in the low single digits in those states. And I think then people would be like, wow, where did you know, where did Doug Burgum come from? Because he just launched on June 7th and now he's already above 10 percent. So so we're just continuing to you know get the word out, continuing to get out and meet people around those two states. And and we know that people are understand and like the message. They love the fact that I'm someone who grew up, you know, working jobs. Uh, you know, the farm, the ranch, the grain elevator, even working as a chimney sweep to pay my way through college that I've had all these jobs where you take a shower at the end of the day, not at the beginning of the day. They love the fact that I'm, you know, a job creator that you know, understands technology and, and competition with China. In 1989, I was in China, I, I would say as a kid, but as a young entrepreneur and walked into a street market and there was Great Plains software being sold for a buck for a five and a quarter inch floppy which is, you know, again, an old, I mean, go, go to a computer museum. <laughs> That's how software used to be sold. And but we were selling it for $5,000 a module. They were selling it for a buck. I mean, so I've for 34 years, I've had China stealing all my IP and I've got, I'm competing against people that uh, as recently as a month ago, didn't think that we were in a cold war with China. So it, it's a, so when we're out talking to people on the ground, I, there's a lot of enthusiasm. We receive so much positive feedback uh, from the second debate. Uh, people were like, hey, we need to hear more. We need to hear more from that guy uh, because he's actually talking about solutions. He's got the experience to deliver it. So we're going to keep keep fire away. And we've got almost as much time between now and when the voting starts as when we launch. So we like our trajectory and we expect to see ourselves in, uh, uh, you know, running near the top when, when the voting starts in January. Let's say you do become the nominee, your party's nominee. What is the strategy to beat President Biden, assuming he's the Democratic nominee as well? Well, the strategy is the same topics that we're here. We know that uh, independent voters are the ones that are going to make this, you know, make the decision uh, for America. And we know that independent voters, like all Democrats and like all Republicans, are suffering under the inflation of the Biden administration. We know that they're all, uh, you know, fighting to make ends meet. Uh, we know that they all know they're paying too much for their gas and too much to heat their homes and too much for their electricity under the Biden energy policies. And they all know that every state's a border state because, you know, you can't go anywhere. Everywhere we go, things like the fentanyl deaths, those are not partisan issues. You could be an independent Democrat or Republican and you know somebody or a family member who's been affected by the disease of addiction or who's died of a fentanyl poisoning uh, because of the, uh, you know, the amount and quantity of fentanyl coming from China through the Mexican border. And so we have a you know, so we, we have the messaging that is going to hit the center of this country. And it's the same reason why in 2016 and in in 2020, running as an outsider, we won our races in North Dakota by more than 40 points, with largest margins of any uh, gubernatorial candidates in the country in those years, because we understand that in the executive branch, it's not like Congress. Congress, you put on a red jersey, a blue jersey, you know, you throw, you know, bombs at each other, you snipe at each other, you go raise money on social media, uh, you know, to fight each other in this constant battle. But when you're in the executive branch, like when we say when there's a blizzard in North Dakota and North Dakota is the size of all six New England states, when there's a blizzard in North Dakota, you know, we plow the roads for Republicans, independents and Democrats. It's not about the red versus blue. It's the red, white and blue. And and that's why we know that we're the best of anybody on that stage to win and beat Joe Biden in November of 2024, because we understand the executive role branch. We understand we're going to return the power to the states. Uh, and that's uh, that's why we know we're we, we have been we have been from day one running a campaign that allows us to win in November of 2024.